Hey guys, this is Chris Monk at Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. Now if you were hoping to catch part six of my uh, Apollyon Floyd Rose guitar build, uh, it's not quite finished yet. I'm still editing it. So you'll have to check back in a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know how long it's going to take. But in the meantime, what I've done is I've shot video on how I created this burst effect using water-based dyes. So um, I will uh, kind of walk you through how I did this. Uh, it's just about the burst effect. I'm not going to go into detail about clear coating or anything like that. Just how I applied this effect. And um, I will include links down in the description below for um, the tools and materials that I use. But keep in mind, I do use some fairly high-end tools to do this. However, I'm going to provide links not only to those tools, but to some alternatives that might be a little bit more affordable. So um, let's get started. This guitar is made out of mahogany with a flame maple top, and I want to treat the mahogany a little bit differently than I'm going to treat the flame maple top. So the first thing I have to do is mask off the mahogany so that everything I do to the maple doesn't contaminate uh, the mahogany. I want to pop the figure in this flame maple, so to do that I'm going to thoroughly coat the entire maple top with a really dark um, water-based aniline dye stain. It usually takes about an hour for the dye stain to dry, but I'll help things along with a hairdryer. After the dye has dried, I'll remove the masking tape from the mahogany. The next step is to sand off the excess dye stain, leaving it just in the open grain figure. I use both my random orbital sander as well as hand sanding to accomplish this. I took some of the darker dye stain and added some water to it to dilute it so that I can apply it where I intend to lay down uh, the darker burst color. This acts as sort of a guide. I lightly sanded the hard edge to soften the transition. Once again, I have to mask off the mahogany to protect it from the color that I'm about to put down on the top. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using an aniline dye to dye the wood on this guitar body. And specifically, the product that I'm using is sold by Keta Dyes, which I believe is out of Wisconsin. And I'll put a link down in the description below so you can check out their products. But what they sell is a kit that contains uh, five different uh, dye pigments. You'll get your uh, three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, and then brown and black. And from those five colors, you can get just about any hue you could ever imagine. Now these uh, pigments come in powdered form, and the reason why I like to use aniline dyes is because the pigments are ground to such a fine um, size of particle that it soaks deep into the wood and gives you uh, a much more consistent and more intense uh, result. So um, I find that aniline dyes are the best way to go when it comes to dyeing wood. When applying aniline dyes, you've got to wear gloves because the dye will stain your fingers and it doesn't just wash out. Now the way I use this product is I mix the, the dye pigment powders into water into a small plastic squeeze bottle and then I apply uh, a liberal amount to a cotton ball which I then rub across the surface and as I need more dye, I can actually squeeze that cotton ball as I'm wiping it on and that will deposit more of the dye onto the surface. 
You want to work fairly quickly too. And the reason is, is because if you let it dry in any one spot, you'll get a bit of a hard edge to the color. That's not fatal because you can continue to rub that area uh, with a damp uh, cotton ball and that will soften that uh, hard edge, but it just makes it easier. And here I'm um, applying that same color to the edge of the uh, flamed maple top. It's important to remember with aniline dyes mixed in either water or denatured alcohol, there's no binder. So once it's dry, you have to still handle the guitar fairly carefully until you can seal it in, or you, that dye will come off onto your fingers. About an hour later, the dye is dried, so I can start to remove the masking tape from the mahogany. Before I can start spraying my darker burst color, I need to mask off the sides of both the mahogany and the maple. And the reason for that is because I don't want the overspray to land on the sides of the guitar. I'm going to use the same dye stain that I used to pop the figure in the maple, and I'm loading it up into an Awada uh, HP uh, airbrush. And then I just start to spray that color down where I want it to appear using that um, lighter application of the uh, darker color that I applied earlier. That sort of acts as a guide, and then I can visually follow that with my airbrush. I prefer to use an airbrush for this part of the process because an airbrush will atomize the dye so fine that I get a really soft transition. Now once this burst is dry, I can remove the masking tape, but I have to uh, be very careful about touching the top of the guitar because uh, there's nothing sealing in that dye yet, and that'll come later on when I spray um, a sanding sealer over the entire surface of the guitar. I want to create a faux binding effect with this guitar, and to do that, the first thing I need to do is take some 220 grit sandpaper, wrap it around a pink eraser, and then sand a very slight bevel into the edge of the guitar all the way around its perimeter. After sanding the bevel, I'll take some of the red dye and I'll apply it to that uh, faux binding using a Q-tip, which allows me to put the red dye down a little bit more precisely. The final step in applying my water-based dye burst is to seal it in with a couple of coats of a water-based sanding sealer. And this is the end result, ready for clear coating. Thanks for watching.